time to take the step towards the edge. Oh my god. <laughs> Good morning guys, how are we doing? Welcome to the beautiful capital of Estonia, Tallinn. Tallinn is a city with tons of history and a beautiful old quarter. It's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site and we're about to explore it in one of the most unique ways possible. On the roofs. Estonia is distinct from its neighbors. Baltic, but also Nordic. Formerly Soviet, yet not Russian. And these complex layers of history are still visible today in its capital, Tallinn. The old town's skyline hasn't changed much since the Middle Ages, partly because of luck, but also because of locals who keep it looking sharp, like this guy, Leo. All right, guys, well, we've just met up with Leo. He is awesome, and he's a legitimate chimney sweeper. We're going to go climb up on the roofs and uh, see how he does his thing. Well, this is going to be quite the experience. I have to admit that when I was a kid, Mary Poppins was my favorite movie. I watched Step in Time literally on repeat. And today, I actually get to live it out and go up with the chimney sweepers like Bert. Are you Step in Time in the background? Step in time. <laughs> Apparently it's good luck to rub the buttons of the chimney sweeper. And it looks like he likes to rub buttons too. <laughs> what I was thinking when I first met Leo is that he looks like America's 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. Do you guys see the resemblance? Honest Abe. Oh my God, guys. I probably shouldn't be vlogging this, but we have no, no safety equipment and it's raining and there's like a moss on this metal roof so I think I'm just gonna stand like here and then film him doing it because <laughs> I don't want to go any closer whoa cat cat uh oh the cat is just sliding down dude you know it's dangerous when the cat is about to fall off of the roof sketchy I think we're gonna go get some breakfast and then go explore more of the old town so thanks to Leo see you guys on ground level So we just finished breakfast and we're about to start exploring the old town which was founded about a thousand years ago and has gone back and forth between many different powers because Tallinn is in an extremely strategic position. It's between Stockholm and St. Petersburg and it's the gateway to the Northern Baltic and to Russia. Estonians are most closely linguistically and culturally to Finns, but over the years Tallinn has been controlled by Danes, Swedes, Germans, and Russians. Each one called it a different name, but the name that stuck the most was Reval, which was the name for the city until Estonia got independence in the 1920s. So we're going to learn more about this city, the history. Uh, we're going to meet up with a tour guide named Lena, who's going to show us the city walls to start off, and the impact that all these cultures had over the years. Basically, Tallinn was a German-speaking Hanseatic town and had a, most of its trade was via sea to uh, east. And this all stopped after the Livonic War in mid-16th century. Everyone was so poor all of a sudden that they couldn't build anything new. And that's why the uh, old parts of the city are so well preserved. Okay, so one of the first foreign forces to come to Tallinn were the Danes. They came here as part of the Northern Crusades, which was Christianizing the people of Northern Europe. Um, they built a fort here, they stayed for a while, and they also supposedly uh, had inspiration for the modern Danish flag right here. So we're gonna go up to the Danish gardens where the legend began. So there's a reason why this is called the Danish Gardens, and it has something to do with Crusades, Danes killing Estonians, and divine intervention. Basically, long story short, they were in a fight with the Estonians. The Estonians were winning at the very last moment. Deus ex machina, divine intervention. God comes down and presents red oh. with a white cross. That's the Danish flag. It's the longest continually used flag in the world. They're still rocking it today. And this happened in like the late 1200s. 1219 or early 1200s. Yeah. Either way, 
a long time ago. All right, so next part of history, uh, Tallinn enters what I think is a super interesting phase, the Hanseatic League. It was like a precursor to the European Union, a city-state alliance uh, of people from across the Baltic. Here they would trade furs and amber for salt, wines, and spices from the west, and it got the city rich. All right, guys, well, we've learned a little bit of history today, but now it's time for lunch, and we're heading to a place called the Old Hansa. Hansa, like Hanseatic League. It's in a 15th century building, and it's kind of like the Estonian version of medieval times. Things could get weird right now. Oh, strong honey beer. Lots of really good food on the menu. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, but I wonder what it was like in medieval times. Rival also known as Tallinn, the year 1543. Excuse me, sir. Some strong ale for you. I've just come in from London on a trading mission and I'm famished. What do you recommend from the menu? Well, I, I can't really read, sir, but if I was to reckon my opinion, I think that Sir Von Ulrich's melted game port looks lovely. Bloody knave, it's so hard to get decent service. I've recently come off of a small bout with gout, so I'd like something relatively healthy. So the game pot it is coming right up. Peasants. Well, at least they ain't all strong. Knave, peasant, I'll show you. Hold your horses, love. A little bit of local flavour for our foreign friends. Oh, the hearty feast. Oh, it's spicy. Extremely spicy. I must excuse myself. Ooh. Ooh. Not so noble now, is ya? Pooping on the throne. It's probably better nowadays. Yeah. Well, that was a great medieval meal, but... Now it's back to more recent times. And finally we arrive back into the 20th century. We're at the Seaplane Harbor. This was built a hundred years ago when Tallinn was part of Tsarist Russia. And this was part of a system of naval fortifications to defend nearby St. Petersburg. So they have some cool exhibits inside and they have some simulators that we're gonna go play around on. You ready? Oh, yes, for sure. All aboard. So this submarine was built in the 1930s for the new Republic of Estonia. Estonia got independence right after this whole seaplane harbor was built in 1920. Um, but it was only independent for 19 years until the Nazis and Stalinist Russia divided up Europe in the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact and Estonia was invaded by the USSR. It was then reinvaded by the Nazis and liberated a second time by the Soviets where it stayed until the end of the Cold War. But to learn more about that history, we're going to go across town to a very symbolic place in Estonian history. Whoa. Shh. Oh my god. Shh. Run, run, run away. Okay, so now we're on top of the Estonian TV tower, which played a crucial role in Estonia's second uh, struggle for independence. In the late 1980s, during Perestroika and Glasnost, Estonians began civil disobedience against uh, the USSR's rule. There was a lot of singing, patriotic songs that were banned during Soviet times, and the final culmination of everything, they declared independence, and in 1991, 
there was a standoff with the Soviet military here. Some policemen stayed here defending the tower, which was the only connection with the outside world, and eventually the Soviets backed down, and Estonia became independent. So this TV station plays a huge role in Estonia's story, their history, and now we're gonna go walk on the top of it. We are a couple hundred feet up in the air. It's kind of windy outside. We should have a good view, and depending on how uh, crazy we're feeling, we might take a little lean over the edge. No smoking, no throwing stuff. No dancing. Sorry, Mike. That is the shadow, a couple of hundred feet down there. This place casts a long shadow in Estonian history. It's time to take the step towards the edge. Oh my god. <laughs> Well guys, it's the last stop of the day and we're transitioning to the most modern, the best restaurant in Estonia. So we're at Noah, which does a modern interpretation of traditional Estonian food. So it should be a really good meal. In a very scenic location. Today we brought you from past to present, but tomorrow we're switching gears. We're gonna go from traditional to the trendy, showing you all the cool new things going on here in Tallinn. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Vaga Brothers for new travel videos every week. Every Tuesday and Thursday, let's That's be specific right. here. And in the meantime, stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. Peace. Let me fly. Take it easy, Chewbacca. <laughs>